Hey there, everybody, and welcome to episode 10 of my Space Block series. I'm Icon, and today we're going to build those steel barrels to finally get the space matter rolling. But it's a long way until we get there. It's not only space, uh, not only steel barrels that we need to produce. We also need to produce uranium ore, and then again, also the other ores that are necessary for the production of space matter. So we are really in front of a big pile of workload. But once we get this uh, whole job done, my base will have access to a much easier way of smeltering materials and a virtually endless source of materials. So, sounds pretty exciting to me, so let's get going. I did already prepare as much as I could to make sure that our new project doesn't die from a under supply of materials. And we're going to produce today the necessary barrels for the filled crude oil barrel production. So I'm going to put up this little recipe on a pin, and this is going to be where we're headed today. So we got to, we have to put up 25 iron ore assemblers, which is quite a big deal. And then, of course, the smeltering and, and all. I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be a really, really interesting array, and I really, really can't wait to put it up. I am now putting up a little bit extra landfill, though, because I might assume that we'll need a lot of territory for that. So ultimately, we will connect what we're building right now with the oil output of these refineries over there. So I want to build that array somewhere in the close vicinity of that, but I'm not sure yet, uh, yet where exactly. I am also preparing a lot of ground for the construction of my other per of my other materials that we'll need for space matter, because at the end of the day, the space matter production here will be a bigger thing than anything else before. Because, you know, let's see, I, I have no clue how's the throughput here. Oh, Should compute that by factories. So, we're gonna be capable of sporting, yeah, well, okay, let's, let's stick with the tier one, that's easier to compute. So, I'll be producing in, at the, in the end 0.8 barrels per second. So that means I will be capable of producing 0.2 units of space matter per second, but we will also need to whip up these other materials. So this will be a huge uh, endeavor. I'm always looking forward, and I'm already for, uh, looking forward to that because this will be crazy. Anywho, let's get started. I got the necessary assemblers together, so we should not have too much of a problem here. I somewhat want to build the oil array and the other facility together, so we might actually consider building the furnaces somewhere into this vicinity. Probably. I don't know. But what's for sure, we're going to start down here. So 25 assemblers for iron ore. That's an insane amount. I can't really put this on even sides, so we're going to... Let's see, that's a block of five. That's another block of five. And let's see. So there's two methods how I could do it. Either split it up on 12-12 and put up a last one on the other side. But I actually don't feel like that. I'm going to let it run like that. So inserter, belt, inserter, Fly, my minions. Love it. Okay, so we got that sorted out. Now, the next thing, we have to assign these recipes here. This little gap in between is really only for counting issues from, from my side. Okay, and we're going to let that roll over there. So... 22.5 units of iron. Is that really the amount we're producing, or does it only look like that? So we're going to... 
actually produce 3.8 units of iron. It should be working decently because we don't need a faster belt. I'm going to explain why in a second. So let's see, this is flowing into that direction. So we're going to need output here, input there. Let's copy that. And copy that again. And for this side, I I do the the first parts always manually to make sure I don't get anything wrong here, because as a matter of fact, if you if you if you chain them up in the wrong way, the the whole array won't work anymore. Okay, now we got that. Look at the look at the dwindling inserters already. I knew I wouldn't have enough materials. Knew it. But it's okay. So we're going to pull our electric poles over here, I'd say. Let's see. Yeah. Oops. Okay, all we'll need now is a little bit of iron ore. There we go. Sooner or later, these dudes will all be able to feed themselves and uh, each other, and the production will kickstart out of that. So this is going to be the iron we need for the production of a steel. Good stuff. So we're going to need 0.3 units of coal for that procedure and the other 0.3 units of coal for the other procedure. So how are we going to do this? Oh, I also need the, the furnaces, actually. We need 24 furnaces. 10? There we go. Okay. Ah, uh, well, uh, let's not do that. So the next thing we'll need are the assemblers for the coal production. For now, I want to put the coal only on one side of the belt, because it can have a lot of advantages to do it like that. And it might be quite beneficial for what I have in mind. Ah, oh, silly me. Could have copied that from below, but whatever. Okay, I ran out of yellow inserters, so let me fix that. I also need some coal from somewhere. But before I grab the inserters, I want to kickstart the coal production here. There we go. Let's go surfing on those on those. In those transport belts, pick up a couple of them extra. Okay, now what do I have material wise on my person? Not really much. Plunder our machines a bit. Okie doke. Now, what's going to be fun is that we're going to be capable to patch this up like that. Our iron will then directly be connected into a smelter-ready the smelter-ready transport belt. I love it. Okay. Ah, no, no. Wrong buttons. Okay, we already have this sorted out. Awesome. So this will bring us the coal we need. Now, the only complicated thing is that we're going to need the coal on the the same coal on the iron furnaces and on the on the steel furnaces so that's that's the only thing i'm wondering right now how i want to do it cuz usually my usual steel setup looks like this where they just get where just, they just pick up the, the iron plates from another but if i do so there's going to be no chance of sporting these furnaces with the 
with the coal they need. So what we're going to do here is a pretty easy and nifty thing. Yeah, I like the idea. Since we actually need only 50% of the production for that thing here, we might as well just chain it up differently. But here's the thing, we need to change this up. All right. Probably not put the furnaces over there. Or, well, I need 12 of them. I wonder if this has enough room for 12 furnaces. Let's see. I don't need to put them... I don't need to leave blank spaces anymore, but nah. As I see here, just a little bit too we could do looks pretty crappy though but ah well whatever it does work you know? or does it nah, i don't like it. this is this is way too crammed for my taste so we'll we'll rather let it flow differently Let's go into that direction. Makes everything easier. There's plenty of room into that direction, so whoops. Just going to make it happen like that. This stuff will flow. Not immediately like that. And then produce the steel here. Okay, one lane will go like that, one lane will go like that. We're, we're going to work with red inserters for the intake here. There are several ways to get the job done, but this one is... This one I like, you know. Let's copy that. So we don't have to place them down all manually. And now, last but not least, we output that steel onto this belt here. We should be actually capable of just copying that like that. Wonderful. Ah, uh, well, maybe not the most tidy one, but for sure, quite a lovely grid. Okay, so this will bring the steel. I hope that the coal production will suffice for the entire grid. I'm a little bit uh, angsty now that the actual coal production is too low. But, you know, if we have this on four machines, it should work out. At the end of the day, it should work out. Right now, uh, there's uh, this blind spot here because, you know, of production, uh, because of production inequalities. I'll have to check this out in a couple of minutes. And nevertheless, we got what we wanted, and that's this little factory here. So let's check it out. This beauty does what it needs with yellow inserters. Just wanted to know what kind of inserters I need. Alright, and now how does that barrel filling recipe work? Ah oh, yeah, okay, so you need to connect a assembler directly to the machine. So we're going to make it like that. So here we go. Doing that and we're just going to get the connector into that direction so about the actual oil production well I've came up with the idea that I'll just whip up a another refinery there and that's that 
I could, of course, and that was a really smart idea, which has been put up, put up a pump in here and connect that with a logic circuit, which just, uh, which I just need to configure in a way that it will only pick up oil, in, that it will only send oil into this direction if there is enough in the tank. But I think that's absolutely paranoid. I don't believe that I will permanently stress out this grid. And even if I do, all I need to do is uh, link in another factory here. Because as long as this grid overproduces, it will not be capable of running dry. As long as there will be always a slight overproduction of oil, there's no chance that this stuff will ever run out there. That's, that's the solution when you're too lazy, just like me, to fill up a, a combinator, a, 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 a logic circuit. I like working with these circuits, they're really fun, but at the same time I also like to work with extremely simple solutions that don't need any brain power whatsoever. Especially when it's uh, when it's easily doable. I love to do things like that. But thanks a lot for the idea to work around with a pump and a decider here. You'd need the pump to have something to connect. Because otherwise you can't really just connect it to a tank. I like the idea a lot. Okay, now we got that. With this in our pocket, we don't need anything else from this side. So we actually got the time today, I really didn't expect to be that quickly done, to think about the actual production here. So let's let's whip up let's whip up several new production chains. Why the heck did that go in here? I don't want that production block. The move production block. I want to have that all in one in one tab. So here we go. All right, since we want to use tier two assemblers, we're going to drop the workforce here a teeny tiny little bit, but still this will be quite an, a humongous undertaking. Okay, so the real interesting part here is we're, we're going to remove the uranium ore. Well, no, we're not going to remove it, but we're going to repeat the uranium production here on a separate table. Okay, so we now know that we will need eight units of uranium ore. Okay, so we want to, we want to have a production of eight units of... No. What? Wait a sec. No, I need 1.3 1, 1 units. Okay. Got me confused. Now that's more realistic. Okay, so to produce the sulfuric acid, we're going to need a couple of extra materials. And that's where the fun part starts. So, water is no problem. Not at all. We're going to need a little bit of that. But this is going to be, as a matter of fact, a really small array. The more interesting part will be the sulfur. So let's see what we're going to need here. Oh my god. Okay, so we're going to need yet another... Yeah, we're going to need yet another big production of oil. So we, we'll need to transform that crude oil into... Wait a sec. Yeah, well, we have such a... We have such a nasty equation here as well. Okay. Just wanted to check out if I... If I did something wrong there. So we're going to need nine oil refineries. Good thing that I stacked up on the necessary materials. Let's see. I... Still have none, that's good. So let's start, we have six, and I do need more iron plates. So this will be possibly the largest next expansion there for our entire grid. So that's, we're producing six of them. I said nine, one, two, three, 
Okay, so we got that. This will probably one of the largest expansions in my in my whole factory life here so far. But this will be pretty good once it's uh, stacked up. We'll also need nine chemical plants. I don't think I have that many right now. No. But at least I will be able to produce them. I'll need seven more. Five, six, and seven. Okay, good stuff. We're of course running low on materials like crazy here. But I don't want to build up a, a real mole section before I am capable of producing materials in a less strange and uh, uncomfortable way than we do now. Because honestly, the way of resource production right now doesn't feel too well. I'm so happy when I can, can ditch those assemblers and replace them with those space matter furnaces because they they actually do so much of a better job there but well things you can't really change so as usual we'll spend a part a portion of the rest of this episode now with the theory crafting behind that before i will ultimately prepare all the bits and bobs that we're going to need so here we see now that the amount of insert the amount of assemblers and such is actually quite low the pressure in this regard is not too heavy. Here we, we see though we're going to need 5 times 9, that's a, that's 45 tier 2 assemblers will be constantly running. The strain on the electric grid is something that I need to take, uh, take into account as well, but we're gonna get there. So what that also means is we, we will need room for nine oil refineries, right? Right. We'll need room for nine oil refineries and nine chemical plants. This is actually a pretty big deal. So I want to set up more room than I have here. So overall, I feel like I could have worked more compact. But at the end of the day, I don't mind if I leave up some room. So we're going to work like here. I'm going to pick up water fill. Because we can use a little bit of that. And we'll need a little bit of water for the entire for the entire thing here. Okay, so this time I'll go, I'm going to try to, uh, to chain up my oil refineries into this direction. There we go. Let's see if this will work out. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, well, we'll be quite close to the other one, so well, let's bring up some extra land. Ah, uh, no. I hate it when that happens. And we're running out of landfill quite, quite obviously. Okay, but let's control X and cut that out and place that down over here. Because at the end of the day, oil refineries and chemical plants are not really... That hard to place. Oh, wait a sec. So we are going to place down ghosts now. So two, four, six, seven, and nine. Wonderful. So the chemical plants will be a lot less bulky. And we're going to we're going to what? So we're going to need most of these refineries for the copying process. We're going to need only one, or wait a sec, ah, good lord, silly me. Well, I'll keep these all the way down here, but three of these refineries will be actually producing something else. So we're going to, I'm going to chain them up into this direction. Probably this one not, here. Okay, so this will be the section where we copy the oil. This will be the section where we transform it into 
petrol. And then with the petroleum gas, we're going to what? Petroleum gas goes into sulfur. Okay, so this entire string here is all about producing sulfur. So we're going to smack it down here and this is going to be like that. All right, we're also going to need a stupendous amount of pipes. I'm just realizing that. Uh, let's put that onto the pin here. So we actually already went through a portion of that production altogether. Nice. So there's going to be another of those species here producing that, that acid. Okay. Now, the easiest way that I see will be to just deliver the sulfur directly from the from one machine to another. We don't need to put that on any belts or whatever. So this place here will be will need to be fed with iron plates and such. So let's let's put up the replication plan for these things down here. So this is going to be a very simple one. Since I have a lot of room here, there's only going to be pipe works there. I'm going to chain it up here. And for for once, I will use a tier two for that. Don't care about it too much. Okay. Oh, that's too narrow. There we go. Because I don't want to handcraft yet another inserter when I have everything I need already set up and running. So there we go. No need to stress out my my automation here in any way. AKA my little nanobot friends. Okay. Here goes. Okay, gonna need some raw material to kickstart that. Here we go. Now only one more furnace. I'm surprised I wouldn't have thought that we'd get this far to end today's episode, but actually, it looks like we're getting the job done. Almost. Cool stuff. Alright, so with this little array, we got all we need for the iron production. So let's use this all the way up here. There we go. A little bit of extra power. Now, all that's missing here from this procedure is water. So let's change that. Water can be placed down in really a tiny thing. And actually, since I need that water just here, I'm going to place it down there. Is that enough for a pump? I don't know, I never tried it. So let's see, water... Oh. Pump. Here, offshore pump it's called. Let's see. Well, okay, we, we need a little bit more water than that. Let's see. I never tried how how much uh, how large the body of water actually has to be does this suffice no all right interesting studies in water you know ah here we go so i'm going to go this way here and well this is where things go a little get a little bit annoying because I have only a very very low amount of resources available right now and we don't have the necessary underground uh, pipes yet but overall well the sulfuric acid can then go into the into these dudes here so we're going to spread it down like that
So what? Four, five, six, and seven. I'm not sure if this will actually work out with the with the fluids, but I'll try. So what it actually should we're we're going to yeah, this is going to be quite easy. And it's also going to be one of the few moments when I'm going to be just connecting things like this. Here I'll use a uh, elbow pipe, sure. But seriously, why should I even bother? Nobody will ever have a problem with that. Okay, so the only thing we're lacking here now, of course, is the oil. Okay. Now we need an oil emptying machine here, of course. And this is going to be where we're needing more pipe works than more pipes than we have right now. Sadly. Because I won't be doing oil works on a on a shoddy basis like that. So wait a sec, that's that's not the direction we need. So yeah. Alright, I'm going to finish this array in the next episode. Because I feel like right now there's this is not a, this there's a lot more work uh, to be done, and I want to expand my landfill a little bit so I can empty the oil barrels accordingly. But maybe I'll do it like that. This looks pretty nifty too, don't you agree? Anywho, next episode we're going to finish the space matter production. I think I'm pretty sure we should be capable of because what comes after this whole thing here looks like a lot. But as soon as I have the assemblers together, it's going to be a copy-paste uh, orgy, and that's all. So, thanks for watching, everybody. It was a blast, and I hope you enjoyed it, too. Leave your comments down below, leave your thumbs up on that video to make it more visible, and of course, feel free to subscribe to my channel if you like that content. Just turn on the notification bell. I do, I do daily content, so you'll stay informed. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.